what can you tell us, like the idiot's guide to your characters, Juliana and Joe? Oh boy. Um, idiot's guide. I love it. Uh, Juliana is, uh, I'm just mad about her. She's, she's incredibly, I mean, I think in this day and age we talk about strong female characters a lot, and this woman is, is obviously very strong, but it, which, you know, is amazing, but she comes from a, an incredibly uh, oppressive life and um, and so she's kind of uh, special because she sees beyond that I think she sees that there's more um, she's full of mischief and she's very driven and she's very focused um, and adversity isn't something that you know that, that breaks her she kind of pushes through which is um, you know in this world uh, rare for a woman at that time mm -hmm. within the confines of where we are I think our characters kind of mirror each other I mean we're very similar in the respect that we both uh, are trying to find ourselves and we want more out of life. Uh, but you see my character under the occupation uh, of uh, Nazi Germany in New York City, which is now American Nazis. And you kind of just go on this journey with him. Um, he's uh, pretending to be a part of the resistance and he travels across uh, uh, what used to be the United States of America. And you just watch him explore and, um, and you get to see the world through his eyes, all these mm -hmm. characters' eyes and uh, how it affects them. We think someone set up Randall and Trudy. It's the only way the pawns could have known where that film would be. The day they took Randall, he mailed this to the box we use. Name mean anything to you? They had a contact to the Nippon building. But if whoever this is is leaking information about our activity, we need to know about it. You think it could be linked to the films? We don't know. What we do know is there's a job in there. And I mean, today, like in the show, you've kind of dumped your boyfriend and he's off to the other interviews. <laughs> and, and, you're, and you're with this mysterious guy. Is this like right. a metaphor for the show? <laughs> <laughs> God. Um, well, n no, no, <laughs> God, uh, no. I, you know, it's it's interesting. Well, you, don't I think, dump, you don't dump him. No, I think no, I think I think the relationship with Frank Frank is is uh, you know has deep, deep, deep roots, and there's a lot of history there, and there's there's an unconditional love between mm -hmm. them, which I think is um, quite powerful. But within that, she's also um, she's fearless as far as what she may lose. I think when you live in a world where mm -hmm. you've lost everything. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a numbness, there's a, there's, a, there's a quality that doesn't, that we're not used to in this day and age, I think. At the Nippon? They only ever want young women. Anybody over 27 should be married. I wouldn't ask you to do it. I wouldn't ask anybody. Before you go into a government building looking for someone who might have got at least two people killed, you better be sure a certain kind of life is no better than death for you. That's a choice you might not get to make again. Yeah, I think she's. I think she's driven by loss, and I think that we all, as human beings, grieve in very different ways. And I think she's somebody that you know her grieving process has been sort of kicked into this incredible focus, um, which is how she's coping, uh, which makes her very interesting to me because it all comes from a place of extreme vulnerability and pain. But there's this, you know, need to to keep going, keep going, keep going which is just, you know, that's incredibly difficult to do. Is it fun to do a piece that is both a period piece mm -hmm. and yet also a fantasy piece? Because yeah. it's a period that kind of did happen, but kind of did ha didn't happen. How, well, how's that fun to play with? To have the aesthetic, I think, of the period is incredible because we're sort of time traveling in the yeah. aesthetic of, of the world we're living in and, and, you know, the costumes and the cars and the world, you know, on a visual level. Um, and yet to have the reality be completely different than anything we've known is, is a beautiful marriage, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I love fantasy, so I think that element to me is, uh, is, is amazing. And then on top of it, doing the, you know, the alternate history, I think, yeah, I, I think who wouldn't, who wouldn't love both of those things, you know? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. incredible. It's the ultimate, like, playground for the imagination. Oh, my God. It's time travel, but, you know, in this very skewed kind of, it's very interesting. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be very hard for you to hear, Joe. But if you are taken to the man in the high castle, I want you to put a bullet in his head. Even if it costs you your life. Are you prepared to?
to do that, Joe? Yes. Of a group in fear. When's this meeting due to happen? Tomorrow morning. Then I'll await your call. If I don't hear from you, Joe, no matter what happened, you'll receive a hero's funeral. With full honors. Thank you, sir. How it? Hitler. Audrey Fisher, who designed the costumes, who's just an incredible, incredible genius um, and amazing human being. Um, she uh, she was fantastically focused on the idea that that not you know it's the '60s, it's the early '60s, but we're a bit behind. Living under oppression, of course, would alter the you know the times and the trends and the things that we think of you know in terms of iconic 1960s. Um, she wanted it to feel like we were just a little bit behind, and so it has that nice kind of mix, I think. It's great, yeah. Mm. And uh, that truck, can you actually drive it? Yeah. Oh, I can drive that truck like nobody's business. <laughs> That's crazy. How I'm very good at that driving truck? that truck. I mean, uh, Thank goodness, because we were in it a lot. I was, I was my own stunt double in that truck, and yeah, you, will, you will come to see me use that truck in, uh, in very race car ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going to become the Batmobile of the series. Oh, yes. Yeah. We're going to oh, be yes. buying toys based on it soon. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, that'd be nice. Obviously, we see the um, uh, you doing the uh, the martial arts in the first one. Yeah. Is there going to be a return to that? Yeah, she's, I mean, she, it's interesting. The Aikido is something for her, I think it's actually quite uh, symbolic for her character because it's uh, what it's about is basically taking your opponent's energy and reversing mm. it back onto them. And that's very much, I think, how she exists. I think she's... You know, not not aggressive, but if if something comes her way, she's able to really quickly turn it on its head. Um, the Aikido's in her, um, but yes, it sort of it comes in in moments of of need. You know. Okay, not just when we've had to rush one.